this lady was confirmed barren as a teenager because the spirit had placed his mark there's only one way the spirit can be known we can't see this we can't see spirit so the only way the spirit will be known if it's the spirit of barrenness that is being worshipped it makes the women barren he can retain their beauty their beauty their elegance is still there but what happens the womb has been taken the spirit will put his fingerprint upon you so that it can be remembered if it's a spirit of poverty you are going to see a spiritualized mode of lack a cyclical routine mode that is transgenerational you will see patchedness and dryness and poverty you know the kind of poverty that when you see it you don't need a dictionary to define it it's practical it's what the people that wrote the meaning in the dictionary saw before they were inspired to do the right strange poverty because the spirit that is being worshipped is a spirit of poverty and reproach and he had to he had to advertise his skill on his subjects i have stayed in lagos that's lagos place host to the largest number of nightclubs i didn't even know that i didn't know that close to where i was staying there was there was um what like zero degree i was in that zero degree I was, until one day i was going to the airport by 5 a.m i saw naked people coming out of that place the zero degree means strip strip flat so they do their own dance they'll be stripping small small by nine by 10 by 11 and then by two when the place is hot zero degrees i was rushing to the airport by 5 a.m and saw zero degrees crossing the road welcome to apostles on fire tv here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with god enjoy the video thank you why god chose abraham it's still something we'll need to find in heaven. These are things that are beyond prayer. These are things that were set up by the sovereignty of God. It set the protocol of your progression without suggest seeking suggestions from you. Because there is a level of sovereignty. There's a level of power that you are not aware of that has already set your life in a certain kind of motion. For Abraham, he was designed to be a father of many nations. Many nations were going to come out of his loins. And God, by reason of his sovereign will, decided to visit Abraham. He did not come in a crowd. He came to him as an individual. And God spoke to him. Get out of your country. You see, the demands that God brought on this man were not cerebral demands. You are in the corridor of cerebral development. Some of you are studying to be psychologists. Some of you are studying to be accountants. Some of you are studying to practice law. And so you understand cerebral things. This was not a cerebral call. This was a demand that was placed on the heart of a man. A demand that required obedience. But you see, there's going to be a challenge in obedience because Abraham doesn't know who he's calling. So because he had not yet built trust in God, it was difficult for him to respond to God at the first instance. So God kept speaking. Even though Abraham heard, Abraham was not obeying because he didn't know God. But when God troubled him to a point that he had to begin to take steps to fulfill what he was hearing. I don't know how God was able to convince him. I don't know how God conquered him. Because this is a scenario that provides uh, numerous assortments of possibilities of questions and contradictions. Now, maybe you have not yet known the gravity of what God was asking this man to do. God was telling him, go to the Nigerian Immigration Service. That's where we get our passports from. And until the national ID card becomes available, your international passport is the most valid form of identification that you have. And God was telling Abraham, go back to the Nigerian Immigration Service and ask them to expunge your name from the lexicon of Nigerians. And just in case you are in possession of a green passport, take it back to the controller and say, well, from this day henceforth, I'm no longer qualified to be in possession of this material. It belongs to Nigeria. And so, expunge my name and take your property. That was what he was. God was asking him. Upon con consecration, you have now become reasonable. You have now realized that Jesus has paid your bride price. And by an act of your will, you have allowed the authority over your life to pass from your hands into the hands of God. The reason for consecration is so that no spirit will have the authority to lay claim of your, over your life. We've been in ministry for long. And then we, we have seen people that spirits have said, the womb of this woman is my own. You can take her head, she can school, and school in, in Oxford University and become a professor. But if it, has, if it has to do with the womb, the womb is mine. And the spirit has a lot of, um, a lot of legalities that are entrenched. 
that seemed to give that spirit authority over the womb of that woman. It's not just an anointed man that is required to liberate that woman. Huh? Because the anointing won't work in a situation where there's a legality. The preacher will need a revelation to see the structure of the situation. And then he can use his authority in God on the strength of her own will. Are you with me? Her will must be involved. Her confession must be involved. She must renounce that thing that claims to have power over her womb. And I've seen all kinds of stuff. We had to do all kinds of things, all kinds of litigation to ensure that people were drawn out of the hold of demonic grips. Jesus has an ambition and his ambition is to save us to the uttermost. That's why there's a spirit called involved. Hallelujah. Please help me tell your neighbor there's a spirit called involved. Some of you were born into families that are totally godless. And if somebody claims to want to bless you in such a family, what he does is that he, 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 he connects you with the spirit. In terms of protection, they say they want to protect you. And in attempting to protect you, what they did is that they made you a subject of a, of a strange spirit. And that spirit now has authority to determine your seasons. <coughs> Hallelujah. The spirit has authority to determine your times. Maybe a, a, a wonderful lady that will change your life is about to get connected to you in a relationship. The spirit will now go and torment that lady. I said, you see, you, you are in the wrong place. You can't stay here. And when the intimacy is trying to build, something strange will happen. Because it's not your portion to get connected with someone that has the capacity and the potency to make your life look better. I've seen how spirits have marginalized the destinies of intelligent people. It doesn't take away the intelligence. The intelligence can still remain, but the life is crooked because it is perforated by the influence of spirits. And if any positive thing whatsoever can come out of that life, there must be a spirit call, a spirit disconnection. I, I was ministering one time. The power of God came upon a lady and she was far from where I was. And the spirit, a masculine voice began to speak through her vocal cord. And the masculine voice was addressing me, that preacher, there's nothing you can do about this woman. This woman is mine. Oh, see, that spirit, are you with me? Seems to be claiming that life. How oh, I wish I had time to show you how vast the theater of the chambers of a human being is. How vast it is. Okay, at least you are acquainted with this scripture, the, the madman of Gadara. When Jesus asked him, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion. Because we are many. The word Legion is a Roman military term that characterizes a garrison of soldiers from 2,000 to 12,000. So imagine that okay, at least there were 2,000 spirits finding a comfortable abode in his chamber. The chamber of one man. Many of you might have wondered, why is it that the people we started pornography together with, they have stopped. But I'm hooked up. Please help me preach to that person. Tell the person a spirit is involved. Somebody's wondering. All the all my mates, they are married. I'm the only one left. And the last time I checked, I was much more beautiful than they all. You will come to realize when the true day comes in your life that your physique has nothing to do with your possibilities, especially if a spirit. Oh, you don't want to preach my message. All the ladies have gone mute. Ladies, help me preach that message. What happened? It's, it's involved. It was a strange, <laughs> it was a strange call that God brought to Abraham. You must disconnect from the spirit that rules you. Because Abraham was part of a family that was saddled with the responsibility of priesthood in that nation. So Abraham's family, they don't go to school. I hope you know, according to archaeology, all of the Chaldees is the first, first place for civilization among humankind so there were people that went to school but Abraham's family they were dedicated to the altar Abraham came from a family of priesthood they know how to hear the whispers of spirits so it was not too unusual for a voice to be locked in his head they were priestly they were in the priestly line and God said there's nothing positive I can build as long as you remain in this context the evil spirits will take the glory for what I want to do so get out disconnect from the spirit let me tell you something about disconnecting from spirits you know, spirits are very possessive. They are jealous. Number two, they are possessive. And so when you go and you want to make any attempt to disconnect from a spirit, it declares war. Sometimes the spirit can come and make you feel lonely. There are so many people, but it begins to play the chord of your emotions and make you feel exclusively lonely. And if you don't understand the tricks of the enemy, that will become a basis of control. 
you want company and because you want company you get involved in things that the spirit likes and then reestablish the dominion of the spirit again so his entire family were dedicated to the altar which is the spiritual system that runs the civilization of all of the Chaldees. Abraham was next in line to inherit the mantra of that altar. That means he was the next Ezemo in line. Are you with me? The intensity of the spirit was so strong on him that the spirit, because the spirit loved him so much, the spirit of that altar loved him so much, he decided to put his mark upon his family. It's by the passionate love of that spirit that his wife became barren. Because it was a spirit of fertility, a fertility god. And fertility gods control life, the cycle of life. So Sarah's barrenness was a proof that Abraham was chosen to be a worshiper of the fertility spirit. It was blessing. It was a sign of approval that the spirit had chosen. So he was next in line for the highest possible portfolio in the managing of the altar. I'm talking about a woman. This lady was confirmed barren as a teenager because the spirit had placed his mark. There's only one way the spirit can be known. Are you with me? Oh, you're not with me. I said, are you with me? There's only one way. We can't see this. We can't see spirits. So the only way the spirit will be known if it's a spirit of barrenness that is being worshipped, he makes the women barren. He can retain their beauty. Their beauty, their elegance is still there. But what happens? The womb has been taken. The spirit will put his fingerprint upon you so that it can be remembered. If it's a spirit of poverty, you are going to see a spiritualized mode of lack. A cyclical routine mode that is transgenerational. You will see patchiness and dryness and poverty. You know, the kind of poverty that when you see it, you don't need a dictionary to define it. It's practical. It's what the people that wrote the meaning in the dictionary saw before they were inspired to do the right thing. Strange poverty. Because the spirit that is being worshipped is a spirit of poverty and reproach, and he had to he had to advertise his skill on his subjects. Ah, the, the, the job of a pastor is a terrible job. <laughs> oh, you will see twisted people, malign destinies cut off, and you go into the spirit realm and stand in the, before the court of heaven to receive a verdict from the mouth of God as an instrument, a rhema with which you battle, you war to retrieve what Satan claims to be his possession. The real job of a shepherd is, is manifest in the day that a wild beast comes for your sheep. When God called Moses, I said, go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. <laughs> that call was not located. Moses had to seek details because he knows Pharaoh the serpent. I don't have time to open the scriptures, show you from the prophecies, the visions that people like Isaiah saw, Ezekiel saw. They saw the substance of Pharaoh. And the substance of Pharaoh was the likeness of an anaconda that was in the midst of the Red Sea. The reality of Pharaoh was in the Red Sea. That was why God chose that they should cross it. There were other ways to go to Canaan. In fact, the, the other ways are shorter. It would take six days to make it to Canaan. But the great one said it must be through the belly of the sea. I don't have time. Why do you think that? Go and watch any ancient Egyptian movie. You'll find out that on the crown of Pharaoh there is, there is a cobra. That was where his reality was. He drew strength from a mystical serpent that had this dwelling in the midst of the river. And then you are going to tell him, let my people go. He said, God, if you want to kill me, just tell me there are many ways to die, not this way. Yes, I'm under your sentence of death. So just take my life. You tell Pharaoh, you give Pharaoh an instruction. <laughs> Pharaoh was the one that determines who sleeps and who wakes up. Because the spirit is possessive. The spirit will never let you go. You will have to exercise your will in consonance with the will of God for you to be able to kiss a spirit goodbye. And, and Abraham knew the implication of what God was calling him to do and he didn't know God's capacity. And that was why his obedience was not swift. If you check subsequently in his dealings with God, his obedience was swift. But at this time, it took a very long time because God had to show him that he had capacity to deliver in the days where the jealousy or the spirit that he serves arises against him. It was because of the fears of Moses that God had to show him some signs. Show him some signs. And Moses had grown up 
in Egypt. So he understood the, the, the magic of the staff. That genies and Jabris. The two, the two herbalists of Egypt. Their power was in their staff. And in the same way, God has said, drop your own. Just to show him. Because at that time, he was still an Egyptian. So God had to use an Egyptian sign. So when he saw that his staff too. Because Genesis and Gabriel, they used to use it to play. To scare small children. They drop their staff, it becomes a staff. They will laugh, pick it up. But a day came where they came home with that staff. And when the story was told, they say another man came with another staff. He came with the staff of God. God will not allow you to wander from the regions of the spirit that you once served without giving you a staff to contend with him just in case his jealousy makes him arise. It was a battle that God was calling Abraham to engage. His liberty was tied to a spiritual battle. So he had to severe himself spiritually. When you have severed yourself spiritually, you might think that you have actually secured liberty. Until the devil begins to play with the strings of your soul. Every appetite you once enjoyed. Is it pornography? Is it sex? Is it lust? Is it anything that you have explored? The kingdom of darkness will stand on that altar and want to use it to regulate you. There are many people in this hall that are stuck to masturbation, but they still come to church and say, Praise the Lord. Those ones indeed have been severed spiritually, but there were several appetites that they used. And darkness is still standing on this appetite, seeking to gain ground and gain territory. There are several people among us that are already fed up, trying to break the hold, and there is no success. And because of that, you have concluded that God doesn't seem to have the capacity to reverse the condition that has bedeviled my life. Those are suggestions that on the soulish plane you have not yet cut off. If we check your phone, check your ringtone, check the thing that forms your civilization, the pictures in your phone, you will know if you are free or not. Hallelujah. If we check what you browse, if we go to your YouTube, your YouTube history and we click on the history, and then we see the things you have seen for the past 21 days. You will know if your soul is free. Many people have asked me, what do we need to do to begin to hear the voice of God? Hearing the voice of God is very easy because he's the father of all spirits. But it might be difficult for you if your soul is hooked up to a fountain that is polluting your universe. You will need to create a different atmosphere for your soul. A different appetite for your soul. God has to become your obsession your passion. You need to drink of him and then you can realize that this is drink that is drink indeed. And God will fill you up with his drink which is his spirit so that you can have a different lust. A lust for God. A passion for God. A hunger for God. Except God has touched you, your soul life and reordered your soul desire. You will not have a sustainable passion for God. Many of you have tried to have a wonderful prayer life like Reverend Hughes. You want to be consistent. Growing in the anointing. Growing in the spirit. Meanwhile your soul is sold out to the devil. And if you check the kind of music you hear, heavy metal. Do you know what they call heavy metal music? I was telling my wife today, I just read something up. And in the United States of America, what they did was that they got mice, 12 mice, put in a bottle. And then they exposed them to heavy metal music. You know what I mean by heavy metal? Huh? Is that demonic rock party that the people have tattoos and all kinds of. Oh, you guys don't have a guitar today. Would have gone on rock. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about. They exposed 12 mice to heavy metal. Three days later, they came to the lab to see that all the mice, they fought themselves and killed themselves. Oh, you people have not gone. I have stayed in Lagos. Stayed in Lagos. That's Lagos plays host to the largest number of nightclubs. I didn't even know that. I didn't know that close to where I was staying, there was, there was um, what, zero degree. I was in that zero degree. I was like, until one day I was going to the airport by 5 a.m. I saw naked people coming out of that place. The zero degree means strip. Strip flat. So they do their own dance. They'll be stripping small, small. By 9, by 10, by 11. And then by 2. When the place is hot. Zero degrees. I was rushing to the airport by 5 a.m. And saw zero degrees crossing the road. I say, Baba, what is that? He say, my son. He's an old man. Say, my son. That was his response. Zero degrees. You need to travel to, to Europe, America. 
Young men like you and me, we are waiting for Friday. They will sell their phone on Wednesday so that they can buy a big bottle of champagne during the nightclub to show the people that I'm still on pay. Still on pay. So you can buy anything on the streets of UK, on the streets of London um, on Thursday. Because he has to sell. He must make money enough to, to drink. He must make money enough to party. These are demons that have taken over their appetites. You might get the person to say the sinner prayer, bring the person to church, but his soul is somewhere. Just like somebody that is already hooked up on, 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 on cannabis. And then you want to bring the person to BSU to study. He has already fallen in love with dope. And because of his love for dope, he can't do school. The love for dope is so much. Oh my God. <laughs> you are wasting all your money trying to educate the Hayana. The Hayana is a scavenger. He's looking for dead things to eat. And he loves it with passion. There is nothing you do if you wash the Hayana's body and release it, it will come back smelling. Because he has a love. And until that love is conquered, the purpose of God cannot find expression. And unfortunately for Satan, Satan is not involved in a creative enterprise. If Satan were to be given patent right for creation, Jesus. If Satan were to be given the right to create. So as it stands now, there is nobody that has a legitimate calling in the kingdom of darkness. Every call you fulfill in the kingdom of darkness is borrowed because Satan is not original. It means he had to deceive you. He had to beguile you. Then he now, he now brainwashed you. And he told you about several things in Egypt and the pleasures thereof. And then he used it to bind your soul. And so the call of God must also affect your soul. You know, in the service of Jesus, there were many things that were legitimate that we had to let go of so that Jesus can be our first love. I was a footballer. But I know you, you will not believe that. But I was number 10 on the field. I could make things happen. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Glory to God. I could make things happen. I could make things. One of these days, I'll just get a boot and come and train on your... You will see the traits of my ancient person. I was into soccer so much that soccer became a god. I started loving it. And God designed that my love for soccer was going to stand against my love for him. So he had to say, no more soccer. It's not a sin to go with soccer. But for me, it became a sin. You know, the Bible says, he that knows what to do and do it not to him. It means it's idiosyncratic. It is specific and particular. Because your soul is a vast island. And you can love anything. You can love someone that's your mother's mate. If you just keep talking to the person and touching the person and touching the person. After six months, you will love the person. You can love anything. You can love a camel. You can love a horse. You can love anything. Your soul is vast and vile. You can love pornography. You can love. I know a young man. He sleeps with with uh, with rams. He when he sees rams, he likes them. <laughs> and then you are wondering, what is at least wrong with him? He he has loved it. And so in your work with God, what God does many times, He disconnects you from several things so that you don't fall in love with it. Because it's difficult to severe a man from what he loves. Get thee out of thy kingdom. Some of you in this hall, the first time you were introduced to lesbianism, it was like a vile thing. And then when you stayed in it, you now felt it was normal. And then you now became the person going out to catch new comforts. The thing now is you, you now love it. So there's a consciousness you have developed. There are several things you see in a female that a normal female will not see because of love. I know you won't say amen again. Amen. Your love makes you see things. It increases your perception. You will locate and notice things that other people will trivialize. Because your soul has bought into it. When you see a lady, you, you notice ah, there's a place. Lesbianism has a stronghold on the soul. Even though it's a spiritual thing, but it amplifies your sensitivity in the soul. It's, it's, it's the manifestation of a perverted spirit spirit of perversion it, it, it powers illegitimate affection there were many things we had to leave those things are legitimate in every respect but the problem was that they were competing with the place of God in our soul if you are going to be saturated with God you must be saturated with him in your spirit and you must be filled with his word he's the center and the circumference the extent and the limit of your civilization if you are in this place and you don't pray for one month and you don't feel it, you have another love. 
another love that you are in desperate need of deliverance from your body is a critical vessel your body is what God needs to possess if he wants to do something upon the face of the earth if there's no body for him to possess his spirit will become handicapped because spirits are not designed to operate in this three-dimensional landscape if you are going to function in this three-dimensional landscape then God spirits need creatures that have bodies a demon is a person without a body persons without bodies and if their operations are going to be effective in this three-dimensional frame of reference they need a creature that has a line sense of a body of head if you know what a heart is that's the design of the heart of a man yes your heart has strings the Bible says God he tries the reins now God will not play the string of your heart except all of them are tuned right there are several vibrations that are acquaintances to darkness and devils it distorts the sound of a string and so God can play it's not everybody that God called that is serving God today because some others they have not allowed the Holy Spirit to tune the string I never knew how passionate God was with sound until I went there and he showed me that he doesn't do anything except he makes the sound on the day of Pentecost before the fire flare the Bible says that what there was a sound on Mount Carmel it was Elijah that said I hear what what was about to happen in the natural was rain but before God brought rain he brought what a sound there is a sound on your life before you manifest you must produce that sound the stringer must string that sound he must produce that rhythm because your life is supposed to bring a new sound into the earth no one else can preach your sermon no one else can sing your song the sound that is trapped in your heart you will need to come to a place of alignment for your generation to hear the rhythm hear the force hear the sound oh your world starts without your sound your world starts without your flavor there is a song that is locked up in your spirit it's a song that is like the waterfalls of the himalayas and that sound will have to come it will have to come because the spirit of god is quickening it god will never walk until he makes a sound thank you for watching do well to subscribe like share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what god is doing from this platform you can also follow us on all our social media platforms we are on instagram we are on facebook and we are on twitter thank you